next lecture we will be completing with our unit number 2 so today i plan to finish power distribution techniques power optimization techniques signal integrity issues yeah in the next lecture i'll cover with uh, hazards and interconnect routing techniques so actually this is what is also covered
distribution. Power distribution is an is a part of an important step in IC design known as floor planning. It has two important aspects. Namely, proper sizing of wires. To ensure that they deliver the required power to the logic blocks. On the chip okay so power distribution is a part of an important step in IC design known as floor planning it has two important aspects, namely first proper sizing of wires to ensure that they deliver the required power to the logic blocks on the chip without getting destroyed. So what does it mean without getting destroyed? We will discuss further. And the second aspect of uh, power distribution is designing a, a global a global power distribution network which runs both VDD and VSS entirely on a metal layer okay the second aspect of power distribution is designing a global designing a global power distribution network which runs both vdd and vss entirely on a metal layer okay yes A third aspect is consider a chip having numerous logic blocks. each requiring connectivity to both 
VDD and VSS. Okay, so consider a chip having numerous logic blocks, each requiring connectivity to both VDD and VSS. Okay, fine. So So let this be a chip.
Okay, fine. So this is VDD and this is VSS. Okay, so this is known as VDD plane and this is known as VSS plane. This is logic block. Right. So here it's all VDD. So if a particular logic block wants connections, then it can connect like this to VDD, like this to VSS. Okay. Okay. So we are seeing how the VDD plane and VSS plane are distributed in a finger structure. So these are basically called as twigs. These are called as twigs. Okay, so now the first aspect of power distribution, which we uh, mentioned was pro proper sizing of wires to ensure that they deliver the required power to the logic blocks on the chip. Okay, so uh, when we say required power, when I say required power, then we know that P is equal to V into I. 
So this v, this v is usually always BDD and uh, this is the current sourcing and if we see for modern day microprocessors this VDD is only about 1.2 volts okay very very less okay so this is usually kept constant and this varies as per the current requirement of logic block. OK. So another important thing, if you remember that before so few lectures we had we had actually discussed about wire parasitics wherein we are told that this is a wire and we told that the length of the wire L is always measured along the direction of flow of current. So if the current is flowing like this, if the current is flowing in this direction through the wire, then the length will measure like this. And we also told that the width of the wire W is always measured perpendicular to the direction of flow of current. And this particular width actually determines the current carrying ability of a wire. OK, so we can say. The width. W. Of the wire. Decides. The. Current. Carrying. Ability. OK. So. Usually. It is. 1.5 milliamperes. Per. Micrometer. Of. Width. So. A three micrometer thick copper wire can carry four point five milliamperes of DC current. Okay, which is more than sufficient. which is sufficient to drive hundreds of logic blocks. OK. Yeah. So now that we have discussed about uh, you know the current carrying ability of a wire which is a function of the wire width. We also have to ensure that the wires do not get destroyed. So usually if we ask that how will the wires get destroyed? So usually wires get destroyed especially in nanometer widths or in modern day microprocessors because of a concept called as electro migration. OK, so now we make a point that. Wires. Can get. Destroyed due to a phenomenon known as electro migration.
okay so it's very simple uh, migration basically means movement hmm? and electro means actually due to electrons okay so electro means due to electrons and migration means it is movement okay so especially uh, um, conductors such as aluminium exhibit this uh, phenomenon called as electro migration okay so uh, materials like aluminium that is al have a fine grain fine grain structure when a thin that is micrometer aluminium wire is subjected to a high electric field high electric field e then the high velocity electrons while moving through the wire collide with aluminium grains and push them to different corners of the wire creating spots of high current density okay this leads to hot spots and eventually wire failure this reduces the reliability of ICs. Okay. So this concept of electro migration was um, discovered by a scientist called as uh, you know Jim Black so Jim Black from Motorola discovered this concept of electro migration um, before almost 100 and 125 years and um, because he observed that um, commercial ICs were actually failing within three years 
within three years of their manufacturing. OK. So. Even. When. Wires were. 10 micrometer. Or we can say 10,000 nanometers thick. Hmm. ICs failed within three weeks of being put to use. Okay. Yeah. So because of electro migration, what happens is that um, increased power density increased current density leads to IC failure due to electro migration. So this person Jim Black also devised an equation which is called as Black's equation. Black's equation for MTF. MTF stands for mean time before failure. So he devised a mathematical model and he told mean time to fail is proportional to j raised to minus n e raised to q by kt where j is the current density N is a constant which can vary from 1 to 3 depending upon which material is used as a conductor. Q is a diffusion activation energy. temperature and degree Kelvin. OK. So. You must heard you must have heard about this decoupling capacitors. are used across IC pins to reduce power supply noise. Is power supply noise. Okay. And this is one of the important reasons um, why uh, copper has replaced aluminium as the interconnect material in ICs. Okay. So, 
कॉपर इज मोर फ्रेजाइल देन एल्यूमिनियम स्टिल कॉपर हैज रिप्लेस्ड एल्यूमिनियम इन आईसी इंटरकनेक्ट बिकॉज ऑफ फर्स्ट सुपीरियर कंडक्टिविटी एंड बींग लेस सबल टू इलेक्ट्रो माइग्रेशन सो इलेक्ट्रो माइग्रेशन इफेक्ट आर मिनिमाइज बिकॉज ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ कॉपर ओके वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो कॉपर इज मोर फ्रेजाइल इन एल्यूमिनियम स्टिल कॉपर हैज रिप्लेस्ड ए आई बिकॉज ऑफ सुपीरियर कंडक्टिविटी एंड लेस ससेप्टेबल टू इलेक्ट्रो माइग्रेशन actually it will be being less susceptible to electro migration okay so that was all so i'll just uh, put one figure in the notes so this is the uh, distribution of vdd and vss planes in one uh, microprocessor from the company dec alpha so in that company no longer manufactures uh, microprocessors but then it had actually revolutionized this concept of vdd and vss planes so i'll just make a note here so this is the power planes in deck alpha microprocessor microprocessor okay yeah now we go to power optimization so um power optimization it aims at uh, reducing unnecessary power dissipation especially in cmos 
logic systems. Okay. So when I say unnecessary power dissipation means the power dissipation which occurs due to unwanted output such as glitches. Okay. So that is why we make a point that unnecessary refers to unwanted values in the output. OK. So what is the connection between having unwanted values in output and increased you know power dissipation ok so i'll say i can write a question what is the connection between unwanted output values and increased PD in CMOS logic. So this is the connection. OK. So PD is equal to CL into VDD square into FSW. OK. So here assuming CL and VDD are constant. Why I say constant? Because this supply voltage VDD, it is a function of what do you say process. It's a function of process. We can say transistor size. OK, so we can say how do you explain that? It's very simple. For 500 nanometer node. So we can say L size and VDD value. So 500 nanometer node. It is 5 volt. Hmm. So length of transistor in nanometer and value of VDD in volt. So when it was 500, it was 5. When it reduced to 350, it became 3.3. 250 nanometer, 2.5. Then 180 nanometer, 1.8, 120 nanometer, 1.2, and anything below 120, it became same thing. Okay, about one volt. Okay, so once you have manufactured a particular uh, logic functionality using a particular transistor size, you cannot change. So once the IC is fabricated, the value of VDD remains constant. OK, this is very clear and usually the system which has been driven, it also does not change its size. That is why this. Is actually. Depends. On the driven load. That is why we can assume that these are constants. OK. OK, so that means we can say that the power dissipation is a function only of the switching frequency. OK, this is called as. Switching frequency of output. Of output waveform. 
Okay, so the more there are transitions in the output waveform, more will be the power dissipation because power dissipation in CMOS is a function of switching frequency. So now what we do is that we assume a system which is having a glitch. Okay, we assume a system which is having a glitch. So we have a D flip flop as usual. Negative is triggering and um, okay, and we assume that this is a gate which is made using CMOS logic. Okay, there are some inputs coming. Okay, so <clears throat> if suppose the output which is expected here Hmm? is this. OK, so we can say. VX. So the expected waveform at the node VX is as shown above. So we can make a note here that this is the expected waveform. And this is what I get. So Right, so if we see the expected waveform has only one transition from one to zero. Hmm? So I'll write it down now. In the expected waveform, there is only one transition from one to zero. What is happening actually here is actually one to zero and zero to one. So there are two transitions. So we see here between the expected waveform and actual waveform, the switching frequency FSW has increased. It has become double because of that. What happens is that the value of power dissipation will increase. OK, so basically there is a glitch which is observed at the output of um, the NAND gate. So we can write observation here. There is a glitch observed at output of NAND gate which increases the value of FSW and hence power dissipation.
Now my question to you is that there is a glitch at the input of the D flip flop. Can you tell me at the output of the flip flop will the glitch appear or it will not appear? And what is the justification for the answer? OK. So there is a glitch at the input D of the flip flop. Then will the glitch appear or it will not appear? OK, so this waveform is now getting applied to D here. Hmm. Yes. What is the answer? There is a glitch appearing at the input D of the flip flop. Will it appear at the output Q? Yes, Chandan. OK, fine. Not Chandan. Yes, Prajwal. Rule number 442. What is your opinion? Uh, so uh, no idea. Sir. No, you have to try now. It's not a question of no idea. Hmm? OK, sir. Uh, what so is your I understanding guess. of the operation of a D flip flop? If you know how a D flip flop operates, then you should be able to answer this question whether a glitch appearing at the input D will it appear at the output or not. Can you tell so, me uh, how does a, a D flip flop operate? Is it an edge triggered system or a level triggered system? So edge triggered. Edge triggered. In our system, is it positive edge triggered or negative edge triggered? So negative edge triggered. Negative edge trigger, correct. Okay, so this is negative edge trigger. Okay, yes, yes. So now at the output, how it will be? OK, so we have to draw three waveforms. OK, first is CLK. Second is the input D and third is Q. Okay, so my clock is going already. Hmm, my clock is going. Hmm, my clock is going like this. These are my active edges, falling edges are there. Hmm? And a glitch is appearing here. OK, so this glitched waveform is appearing at the input D. Hmm? I'll draw this waveform here. And then there are multiple glitches which are coming. Prajul, tell me in response to this D waveform, what will be the output Q? Okay, so now there are multiple glitches which I have shown. Okay, there is a glitch here. I will indicate a glitch. Okay. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's a glitch here, another glitch here, glitch here. All these are unwanted actually. So many glitches are coming. So can you tell me what will be the output waveform Q? Hint is that so. you, are, you have to sample the value of D at every falling edge. So whatever is the value of D at the falling edge. That will be the yes. value of the output Q. Output. Tell me now. Yes. yes. Tell me now. So um, where should I mark the sampling intervals? Do you agree that this is a sampling sap, not interval sampling instant? Yes, sir. Agreed. This is a sampling instant, right? The edge. 
right yes yeah, so the falling edge yeah yeah so falling edges so all falling edges will be the sampling sampling instance another sampling instance is here okay another sampling instance is here now tell me what are the values of the input d at the sampling instance so there are three sampling instances i have drawn indicated by blue vertical lines yes yes, sir. Tell me. yes. so, so uh, assume... in the first instant it is one it means okay, high fine. okay fine so usually in a d flip flop q follows d right yes, yes sir. so it's one so now tell me the input d has gone from 1 to 0 should i take it to 0 no sir no because at that time the edge has not come so it will continue right yes sir only yeah. at the sampling yeah. instant yeah. it at will the, check at the sampling instant so at the sampling instant again it is encountering a one so it will continue right it will continue yes, till sir. it will continue till next sampling instant next okay so at this sampling instant what is the value of d zero zero low so what will happen it will go down it will fall yes this is a proof that means if i simply use a d flip flop at the output of a nand gate which is actually affected by glitches that d flip flop will actually eliminate the glitches did you see that yes yes this sir. is the solution yes so from the above this thing we can actually conclude that glitches don't appear the, yeah so the d flip flop eliminates the glitches at output of cmos nand gate aap apne aap ko mute kar sakte ho prajwal because okay sir because d f flop is an edge trigger system and it neglects all changes and it neglects all changes at its input d which occur between two falling edges yes so the d flip flop eliminates the glitches because d flip flop is an edge triggered system and neglects all changes at input d which occur between two falling edges okay so this is how um power optimization is brought about in cmos systems okay power dissipation can also be reduced by designing a 
state machines while using gray encoding technique you must be knowing that in gray code from one gray code to another there is only one bit change technique wherein only one bit changes when state machine goes from one state to another okay another five more minutes because i don't want to keep the topic pending so signal integrated issues there are two issues so this may not be available in the text but i did read somewhere okay integrity actually means purity so signal integrity means two things has two things basically controllability and observability so controllability is defined in a very simple way the ability of an input pin in an ic to assign logic 1 or logic 0 value to a particular node of the chip okay so controllability is defined as it is defined as the ability of an input pin to assign logic 1 or logic 0 value to a particular node of the chip and the opposite of that is called as observability
again the ability of an output pin to deliver logic 1 or logic 0 value uh, at the output node on the chip to the real world okay 